Will adding fruit and honey to your meat-based diet cause cavities? I've been asked this many times recently on Twitter. I wrote a response that I wanna go through here with you today on video. So one thing I wanna first wanna start with is an anecdote from Chile. We know that when indigenous Chileans first introduced fruit into their diet, they developed unprecedented rates of cavities. Why? Because fruit, just like other fermentable carbohydrates, the bacteria in your mouth will ferment this, these carbohydrates into acids that proceed to eat holes in your enamel, cause cavities. So that's the first thing. Yes, it definitely can, but there's more things to consider here because there is a constant battle going on, a battle between demineralization and remineralization. So when the bacteria ferment these carbohydrates into acids, it decreases the oral pH, which promotes demineralization and cavities. However, we have a balancing force, remineralization from our saliva and nutrients and that can battle the demineralization. So just because you eat one piece of fruit doesn't mean you're necessarily get a cavity. In fact, if we turn to Dr. Weston A. Price's work, he studied many cultures that did include some carbohydrates in their diet, and they didn't develop the rates of cavities that he saw when these cultures introduced the displacing foods of modern commerce, which were mainly the sugars and the flowers. And why did it happen with the sugars and the flowers, but maybe not like the whole oats? Because some cultures ate a lot of oats, others won potatoes, and they didn't get these cavities, but with the flowers and the sugars, they did. Well, there's a few things to consider. The quantities of each of these that they're eating, as well as refined carbohydrates like sugars and flowers have increased surface area, where bacteria have more surface area to, to ferment and turn into acids. So the frequency and quantity and types of carbohydrates all play a role to determine if demineralization is going to win over remineralization. So for example, eating one piece of fruit with a meal is very different than eating fruit all day long in between meals and snacking. This one is going to create a situation of demineralization, a low pH in the oral environment throughout the day, whereas the other one, you have one acid attack and the body can remineralize it no problem. Further, we gotta consider the entire diet in its whole. So for example, someone's eating lots of nutrient-rich, bioavailable animal foods, high status with vitamin D and vitamin K2, they fortify the teeth. Um, if they have some carbohydrates, the, this, this nutritional status can help combat and strengthen and fortify the teeth against demineralization. Whereas someone that is not getting all this nutrition, their teeth are not as fortified and they have a higher risk of demineralization winning over remineralization. Further, if you eat a meal with some fruit, but you're also including anti-karyogenic or karyoprotective foods like meat and dairy, um, it can offset some of the acid attack that would be produced by the fruit. Also, chewing and stimulating saliva, which buffers against acid, is very important. It's why sugar drinks are one of the worst things you can do for your teeth. Because one, the sugar, which is fermented into acids. Two, is you don't, you're not chewing. So you don't stimulate your saliva that's going to help buffer the acid. Three is people tend to sip on them throughout the day. So that's the high frequency, which will create a low pH environment for longer durations of time. All of these leading to increased risk of demineralization, winning over remineralization and causing cavities. I can tell you this. If I were not allowed to practice oral hygiene strategies, I would be very cautious about adding any significant amount of fruits and honey in my diet. However, oral hygiene can help prevent decay with a diet that otherwise would have caused decay. In my point of view, if your diet would lead to oral decay absent oral hygiene, it is probably not a species appropriate diet. And so I recommend if including fruits and honeys to do so in moderation and with food and not snacking on them all day long. And I would probably recommend including an oral hygiene practice along with this.